saw that there was a way that I could get involved and perhaps engage with my academia and go down there. I went down to the park and was surprised at what was taking place. There was an unbelievable amount of sentiment being offered to the conversation. The library was affording people who didn't have the ability to just go down and occupy the ability to take part in the conversation, to really offer something to what was going on. There was people coming down and writing messages in the cover of every single one of these books and <coughs> giving them to us, along with a story and stating how personal the experience of reading the books were, how personal the experience of them coming down and offering this to the rest of us was. I stepped out of a very promising career as a doctoral candidate in pharmacy for library science, and everyone thought that I was crazy because they were insisting that libraries were a dying breed, that I wasn't going to find work, that I was foolish for what it was that I was doing. And I see that here, in the midst of chaos and what everyone views as being like this movement of anarchy, the people created a library, which speaks so much to the relevance of something. I think that it can't be stressed enough that what was going on here was the creation of a community through conversation and the sharing of ideas. And what happened, what you see sitting right here in front of you, is an affront to me not only as a student, but as an American. And this is sad. I, I, I hope that it impacts everyone the same to see that this was a crusade to destroy a conversation, to destroy our our right to come out here and, and engage with each other. Uh, our next speaker is Francis Perconti Anthony. Hello, my name is Francis Perconti Anthony. Um, I don't have a prepared statement, I'm just going to speak from the heart. I first came to Liberty Park just before the first Brooklyn Bridge massive arrest. <coughs> I was immediately drawn to the People's Library because uh, I'm an actress and a writer and I have a great love of words. And the spirit of the movement there was so strong and so beautiful. The idea that information, that knowledge was available free to the people, I think it signified everything that OWS is about. I truly believe that knowledge is power and People's Library gives power to the people. To see all these books destroyed, to go to the sanitation facility and to see how heartlessly and callously all of our work, all of the people's work has been thrown out like so much garbage is heartbreaking. And sorry, and um, <coughs> I just uh, I want our books back. <laughs> I want our space back. I want our movement back. You can take our books, you can take our park, but you can't take our spirit, and we're not going anywhere. <coughs> Thank you. My name is Stephen Boyer. I lived in the library full time for one and a half months. And it happened organically that I lived there. I came to the park as a skeptic. I became so moved by the generous spirit of its inhabitants that I felt compelled to spend one night in the park to see what it was really like to live there. And that turned into me never leaving. Um, I found a new family there. The family was comprised of all the people living there and everyone in solidarity. Um, people from all over the earth have sent poems to the OWS Poetry Anthology, and they've donated books. Um, I lived in the library and worked as a librarian in order to keep the space clean and organized and safe. Intellectual, intellectuals generously donated books and their time. We had many author talks take place in the library. 
um, our nation's poet laureate, Philip Levine, um, came in the morning before the raid and donated and signed a copy of his book, What Work Is. And the NYPD and Bloomberg trashed it, as well as all the other books. Um, they have no reverence for the beauty of these objects, nor the beauty inherent um, in the People's Library. Um, there was a magic that um, sprung up there, and it's gone. Two more speakers. Next speaker is William Scott. My name is William Scott. Uh, I'm a professor of English at the University of Pittsburgh, and I'm here on my sabbatical semester. I chose to come and live in uh, Liberty Plaza and work and sleep uh, with the books uh, in the People's Library um, and build a collection there. Um, I'm a, uh, an alumnus of the same university that Michael Bloomberg uh, got a degree from, and Michael Bloomberg generated, uh, donated very generously uh, to this university, Johns Hopkins, while I was a student there. Uh, I even taught courses in a, in, a, in a building named after him, Bloomberg Hall. Uh, when this happened, uh, when the eviction happened and they uh, trashed our library, uh, the first thought running through my head was, how could this man um, throw away so many precious books? Um, the books in the People's Library are here, uh, uh, as others have said, uh, to generate a conversation, to keep a dialogue open, but more importantly, the People's Library embodied all the values that, that we're struggling to defend in our society. Uh, with libraries closing around the country, with students in college uh, having difficulty paying for books. I myself am deep in debt with student loans, um, primarily because I had to buy books. Uh, I love books. I surround myself with them. I can't even move in my apartment because of all the books that I own. And uh, what was thrown out from the People's Library was a wonderful collection of scholarly materials, of precious, uh, rare materials connected to the occupation. Uh, it uh, made my day working there every day uh, to introduce people to new uh, authors, um, to uh, broaden people's horizons, uh, to allow them um, to learn about what we were fighting for down there, uh, and to uphold the values of the, dem of the democracy um, that we live in. Um, with the destruction of the People's Library, uh, the mayor uh, has, uh, uh, has helped uh, to destroy um, many of the values um, that we have been brought up to cherish uh, as, as the most valuable things um, uh, that we possess. Uh, so uh, we are <coughs> demanding uh, uh, from the mayor a, uh, a space for the People's Library, a public and accessible space uh, for the People's Library, and the replacement of all our books, and an acknowledgement that this is wrong, and of taking full responsibility uh, for what has happened here. Thank you, Bill. And our final speaker is Andy. Okay. librarian. I occupied on three uh, different multi-day occasions um, while Zuccotti Park was still a beautiful thing um, that we had created. I poured my heart and my soul into this library over the past two months. Um, when I wasn't occupied, I was mailing our emails, I was blogging, I was tweeting. Um, I don't think I've had an hour go by where I didn't do something for this <laughs> library over the past two months. Um, my passion, um, my calling, is connecting people to books and to information. Um, th this movement, the heart of this movement, is ideas and literature and art and sharing. The destruction of this library and it was in every single possible sense a real and a true library. It was a library built by donations, 